Hi everyone, you've got Britt here from Celestial Citizen and Bailey Burns. Bailey, how's it going? Uh, I'm good. I'm I'm uh, I'm very curious to see what happens tonight. How are you doing, Britt? Um, I'm good, but yeah, I'm like waiting with bated breath here for um, season three, episode four. Also, kind of curious as to whether or not we're gonna have technical issues. Yeah, stay tuned, folks. The jury is out. And you have a you have a special guest over there with you. Uh yeah, she just ran away, so we can introduce her later. She she's kind of in the corner. <laughs> Playing hard to get, Chessie. Yep. <laughs> Let's see. I also got Dra Dragon in the West always. Always has coming in. Good comments. That was that was one of my and other favorite comments, yeah. Cause Dragon in the West says, I think the Andy who grows plants that Kelly is talking about is an Easter egg for the Martians author, Ooh. Andy Weir, whose MC is an astronaut botanist, Mark Watney. I love that idea. That would be so Kelly wild. Kelly is trying to prevent Matt Damon getting stuck on Mars. Wow. That would be wild. That would be really wild. Um, and then actually Dragon in the West had a couple other things. Yeah, too. that was one of my favorites. I was going to say, Dragon in the West says, does anyone else think that Ed might have might be a little high on painkillers for injuries based off the way you're talking to Danielle. Right? Like... Maybe. Something is a little odd with him. I don't know if it's just the actor's portrayal of, like, his, his like, accent, but, like, he does always seem, like, a little bit, like, wasted to me. Well, you know, with his decision-making skills, you don't know. Wow, so many good comments here. Also, Darsh, thank you for hoping that Bailey and I get to IAC Paris this year. We really want to go to IAC in Paris. I'm thinking, here's what I'm thinking. At least in the For All Mankind universe, Brit and Bailey make it to Paris. <gasps> Something in that universe made it work that we made it to IAC Paris. Even if it's not in the totally. show. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like we, we make, yeah. Cause like who knows where like For All Mankind 2022 will be. Oh, we might be on Mars. Yeah, we might not have time to go to Paris. Yeah. <laughs> oh, duh. <laughs> we just happen to pop on the elevator and we're like, Elon, don't do it. <laughs> oh, what's our drinking word going to be today? What's the name of the episode? So we are officially on season three, episode four, Happy Valley. How about crew? Okay. I also, I'm going to tell on myself, I am not drinking wine tonight. What are you drinking? I found this. We should be sponsored by Simply, um, the Simply Sweet. I don't know. It's a lemonade, but now they have spiked lemonade. And honestly, oh, I was about to be like, are you really copping out and drinking lemonade today? No, I, I even I got the wine glass to pour it in to pretend like it's wine, but I just really need something sweet and and girly wow. tonight. So this is what I'm All drinking right. tonight. All right. Let's do this, Bailey. I'm good. That's good to hear, kiddo. I'm just sorry your old man had to whoop you so bad, but um, I did warn you. Being first isn't everything, Dad. I bet like Sojourner's somehow gonna let you clip them. Yeah. Clear the deck. Batten down the hatches. Cut the jib, you scallywags. Miss Baldwin, I believe we're in need of a shanty. Aye, Captain. I love this. Oh, what is happening? Are we literally watching Space Pirates? This is wild. What am I watching right now? This music is everything right now. I'm here for the writers on this one. Sojourner One is go for Operation Jolly Roger. <gasps> Operation Jolly Roger? I'm here for That's it. almost a slippery pickle. <laughs> <laughs> That's a callback to our uh, Space Force watching for those of you. Yeah. And so like, he had to present to them like what this tactic was. And so they were like, what do you call this? And he's like, I didn't do, like, I didn't plan on this, right? And he's like, I call it the slippery pickle. <laughs> you shut up right now. <laughs> They're gonna beat us by eight days. What can we do to retake the lead? Operation Jolly Roger is what changes things. 
Oh boy. We dump the propellant reserves if we have to. Ooh. Phoenix can just make more fuel once they get that down. That feels yeah, like not good leadership. Even if we like had a good Sojourner, we wouldn't have like enough to slow down to enter Mars orbit. Know. Yeah, we're pushing a hotel out there. I mean, it's too much mass. I mean, not he literally was... Oh. oh! What is this side? NASA's surprise unveiling of a solar sail has upended the race to Mars and will likely bring the American craft to the red planet a full week before its competitors. Wow. Director the Mars race plays great on cable news and at DC cocktail parties. But there's a lot of people out there in the heartland wondering what Mars has to do with them. Coal, uh, I hate oil, this argument. and natural gas industries are in free fall. That's so cool. I'm here for it, man. As the only humans for about a million miles, there's nothing like a little music to bring us all together. And as always, if you have any requests, you can reach me on my private radio frequency, 6.8 megahertz. Oh, Ed. Wait, I didn't see what was on the bottle. Whoa. That's... Hello. Jenna. Drink it today, kiss it tomorrow, eat it the day after. This is <laughs> some things I'd, I'd rather not. I love that. I would get that on a shirt. <laughs> And now to our continuing series yeah, on the of Sojourner One, America's yeah, Kelly. first manned mission to Mars. Yeah, guy, I don't know. Week, we took you to the former cosmonaut who famously defected to the United oh. States in 1983 during the Jamestown crisis. Another person in the comments was right. Yeah. If we had a photon torpedo, we could blow him out of the sky. Huh. I say we nuke the entire site from orbit. It's the <laughs> only way to be sure. <laughs> What is that, Wrath of Khan? Oh, no, you idiot, it's from Aliens. <laughs> I'm so here for this, like, crew dynamic thing going on. If you say crew, do we have to drink? <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Grab that roll of duct tape, wrap it around me. Tight, damn it. Dan, go on. Tight, damn it. What are you thinking, Gordo? Thinking if I make a run for that reactor, it just might be able to just save everyone in Jamestown. That's crazy. Keep going. Up, man. Going. Keep Please. going. I'm sorry. Okay. Nick, I, I... Don't you have some reports to generate? Uh, yes, sir. Wait a minute. Was that guy? That was the weird guy that was gave that was giving Gordo and Tracy the tour. Remember? Are you sure it wasn't? Remember the guy last season who we were like so awkward? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I felt like he had like red maybe I don't know. I feel like it's just to get away from oil, man. Like Are you Jimmy Stevens? Son of Tracy and Gordon. I get it, but I'm conflicted. Uh, I'm Jack Cool, baby. How's it going? Thank you. Never changes. We do the work. The politicians grab the floor. And she's one of us. Not anymore, she isn't. Yikes, Margo, come on. Yeah. Let's have a little more women supporting women. And many said that NASA was too stuck in its ways, too weighed down with bureaucracy and red tape to meet such a challenge. <laughs> Still hear that around the town a little bit. I want to thank you all for your service to your country. Thank you. Margo's like, yikes, I'm a spy. Is that what she's thinking, you think? <laughs> well, I just think it's funny. Like, Margo's, like, criticizing, like, Ellen. I'm like, I'm pretty sure Ellen didn't give, like, the nuclear secrets to Russia. But, like, okay. Yeah. I agree. Have you read the commission's report? Yeah. Look, I'm not saying something didn't happen. But it ain't what they're saying. That's for sure. It was a cover-up, man. Pure and simple. Vance Paulson was the best Marine, the best astronaut I ever met. And you're gonna tell me he was shot in the back by a Russian? I don't think so. I mean, you gotta look at the whole thing. Why was there even an issue with the reactor? I know it had a backup cooling system. What is going on? You're not telling us everything. What conspiracy is this? It? What is this conspiracy? Wow. Wow, yeah. I feel like that's gonna go down a really dark rabbit hole for him. I agree. And honestly, this episode's a good reminder that even when we do cool space stuff, the general public probably won't buy off on it, you know? I'm having trouble hearing you. My crew, they are about to do something very dangerous. The 
What are they gonna do? What do we got? Telemetry from the Russians, their Delta V just took a big jump. Oh. Changing their heading. Trajectory correction maneuver? Too long for a TCM. They're pushing it hard. I think they're trying to get back in the race. And they just boosted their TMI burn thruster by over 20%. Wow. That's way too much. It could overtemp their engine. So what's the time frame for a rescue? 72 hours before the radiation kills everybody on board their ship. Do it. Ed, you don't have enough prop to pick up the Ruskies and break to enter Mars orbit. I know. Neither will you. This rescue is a one-way ticket home. Maybe it's better if they just take if this. If it was us breaking down in the middle of outer space, we'd want the same consideration, don't you think? All right, Ed. I'm here for that. Mm -hmm. Jeez, I... Okay, but Bailey, like from an international law and policy perspective though. Yeah. Like, isn't it more likely in this scenario that NASA as a government entity, like agency would probably send their crew to make the rescue? I mean, I guess- Or be, or, I mean, I guess technically Helios is a US company, so. Okay, for those that don't know, in order, if you're like a private entity, you have to be sponsored. That's the best way to put it. You have to have it. Yeah, we'll pause this real quick. You have to have like a nation own like take responsibility for what you're doing so like spacex the u.s is the nation that is taking responsibility for what spacex is doing so helos by extent is under the u.s so i don't know necessarily of that um i'm kind of not following the reason that they're doing it over nasa i don't know if there's really one way or another or who's better who's not i feel like mm -hmm. nasa's probably more agile to like figure things out and like, mm -hmm. like just their ship is better for it. But Helos probably has more room for people and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, there's the um the there's a space law the uh was it return and rescue agreement I believe and yeah and that's basically that that says everyone that signed that if there is an ash if there's astronauts in distress or cosmonauts in this case, um, countries are required to basically do any means necessary to save them. So that's mm -hmm. where a lot of this is coming from. And that is like a law that stands. And that was specifically for like, if an astronaut landed in, you know, had a crash landing somewhere or something like that, that country that they landed in has to help that astronaut. So yeah. there is a lot of space law here that they're they're kind of skating over it. Like I, I would be interested as well. Yeah, like, someone being like hey, what's this about? Like why, someone being like, why do we even have to stop for them? And then someone comes in like, well, according to the return and rescue, like that would be really interesting, I think. Yeah, there's like, a lot of good like, there's a lot of good like space law and policy happening right now. But I do feel like this is also pointing out the importance of why you don't want to have bad actors in space because the Russians obviously just did something really reckless mm -hmm. that before, like moments before this, we were all on track to have three successful missions land on Mars, each able to do their own science, research, whatever, mm -hmm. and then return back. And then because we have one bad actor now, I mean, thank goodness we had three missions go because otherwise we would have had no one landing on Mars, potentially. And this is just another example of we should be doing this. I, I, this is my personal opinion, obviously, but like, as much fun as it is to talk about space race and even though that is what we are in right now and everything like that i'm way more here for when we if and when we finally get to the point where it's just humans going to space going to mars going to wherever like and not have all this stupid competition that yes it helps in terms of getting funding but at the end of the day it's like or we could all just go to mars you know like yeah i just basically want i i just want to to move further and for, further towards like greater capabilities mm -hmm. in space so yeah i'm like not here for this silly recklessness that leads to no nothing it's a pissing contest over it i know how disappointing this is for everyone but bringing those folks home safe and sound is more important than mission success good for you ed We'll be ready to go by the time we get your response. I feel like Deb's like, no. Phoenix out. Yeah, I feel like he's gonna... Is this when Deb turns on the AI and just, like, doesn't let... Alright, let's him talk about this. Throws another monitor. So what do we think about his proposal to... Give Threatens to buy social media? I don't know. 
Well, if a ship's in trouble, you go rescue it. Right? That's been the law of the sea since the dawn of time. There we go. That helps. I mean, she said sea. Yeah, she didn't say space, but... <laughs> yes, and our crew has also been trained by NASA, so they're more than capable of handling... Show of hands. Those in favor of letting NASA handle the rescue? Dang. Oh. Yeah, this is one where I feel like NASA and Helos would have to talk. Hey, if if they do this rescue, NASA's not going to have enough fuel to make it to Mars. Your point being? What is this guy? Is that really why you're doing this? Ooh. It was the group's decision. Can you just hack the system and like you're doing what I say? Oh my god, I would be panicked if I suddenly became aware of the fact that I was on a ship that I did not control. And I swear to god, if Kevin Spacey's voice starts coming on over the ship, I'm gonna freak out. What is it? Dev, yes, it just locked me out of my own spacecraft. To, to be fair though, okay, so just to... The other side of this though, is that Margot did so give the Russians the nuclear engine So that design. they could be this problem child. Yeah, I agree. And, like, and that has directly led to this scenario. Yeah. So, like, it's hard for Margot to be like, oh, like, we're, like, she also, this is kind of her doing, too. Never give away government secrets for a man, guys, okay? That's the lesson here. Yeah. Just got word from Houston that the Russian engines might use liquid hydrogen, just like mm -hmm. us. If we could get access to their fuel, we could still make it to Mars. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Oh, that's a good point. Just get some video of their LH2 valves. Clark, how's that separation from Mars 94? Oh, whoa, look at this. Yes, me. I've got eyes on the LH2 valves. I'm getting like Air Force One vibes. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. Oh, starting strong already. What do you see? Engine four, tie two begs the temperature on the Russian ship. If their nuclear engines are anything like ours, that heat will transfer to the liquid hydrogen tank, overpressure it. They could bust that system open at the seams. Oh. That could take out both ships. <gasps> I need a drink, but luckily I have one. Dude, Margot really, like... Screwed the pooch. And this is a really big lesson of, like, you have to let people... So, cooperation, collaboration is good. But also, in this case, it wasn't collaborative. They basically just, like, ex they, like, extorted her for the secrets. It's kind of like getting the answers to the test, right? Like, if you don't learn it, like you're you're yeah, never yeah. gonna actually yeah and so it's like this is the problem is now like they've got this really powerful yeah. ship but they just don't know how to operate it mm -hmm. that was wild so like why did that happen was it just that the ship was overheating or was it because they were trying to extract the fuel i don't think they had started trying to extract the fuel yet i kind of missed yeah. it i think it was something to do with like the operations that they did to get them in that predicament had something weird with the pressure of the tank. Okay. Yeah. 
Like maybe it was like the fact that it kind of stalled out after, you know, going full throttle and then it stalled out. Like, I, I don't really know. That would be something I'd have to probably go back and watch it about like what exactly happened. But yeah, that's, so then what happened was the tank, you know, like it burst at the seams, exactly like she said. And because like, since there's no gravity, then the, the whole like equal and opposite reaction thing. So the energy is going out. Here, we'll use my alcohol can. <laughs> so the energy's going out this way, right? So that forces it this way, and that's what rolled it in, obviously. But like, but it was kind of like you know, like Wally when they have like the um, oh Brit, you haven't seen Wally. Wally. This is a huge conversation point with us. But he's got like oh, yeah. a fire extinguisher that flies him around and stuff, and that's kind of like literally what just happened at a very fine, like a single, like you saw it explode. It was a single little. Yeah, it was not. Well, and then, like, the, but the wild thing is, is, like, so truly, I mean, they could have called this episode, like, I don't know why they called it Happy Valley. It was not happy. Um, they should have called it, like, Space Pirates, because it literally, it reminded me of, like, how you see in, like, pirate movies, mm-hmm. you know, they're where they're like, like yeah. oh, the ship's coming in, and you, like, see the slow collision happen. Yeah. Or, like, the, the line between the two ships that they're, like, trying to get across, like, that's the Space Pirate vibe, too. Yeah. I mean, I think one of my theories for this is that this is all going to come out and be very ugly for Margot because they're going to do deep research into what happened to the Russian tank and why they were using the exact same fuel as the U.S. And they're going to be like, wow, this is the exact same design. Yeah. So I think this is going to, this, I almost feel like if this hadn't happened, Margot might have been good to go. But because this happened, that might be her downfall, you know? That's actually a really good point. I hadn't thought about that. So, do we have, probably for the comments, this is my question, because apparently we have a very, a large amount of, like, predictors in this, in this, people who watch this, and you guys are putting out amazing predictions. Um, I want to hear what you guys, like, who you think is going to be the first boots on Mars, right? Because, like, at this point, it's going to be, like, Ed or Danny, but I don't know about that. I don't know if that's truly how I think it's gonna go but what do you think Britt? yeah let us know give us some ideas to claim as our own <laughs> this was fun but also terrifying that last scene is i feel like i'm gonna have nightmares for sure yeah um but anyway but thank you everyone for joining us on this journey in you know journey to mars <laughs> like and subscribe and buy a t-shirt folks i'll wear my t-shirt next week um we can be matchy matchy. Yeah, we should. All right. Bye, everyone. It's a pleasure, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>